Hello, I would like to inform you that what you're about to listen to are the views and comments from the host and guests and only reflect their own views and not the community as a whole. I hope you enjoy the podcast and Eddie, play that banter section. Uh, I've just opened my Instagram and I'm like, none of these people should be allowed out without Kara. What? Like, none of them should be allowed out without a chaperone. What do you mean? You've opened up your Instagram? What do you mean, these people? My, all the cosplays I've done. <laughs> oh! <laughs> None of you can find. <laughs> I genuinely thought you were talking about actual people. What the fuck? <laughs> well, I mean, some of them. Just yes, lit, but... just open up. <laughs> well, well, you shouldn't be out, and you shouldn't be out, and you shouldn't be out. This is past your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> it's 25 to 10. That's almost bedtime. Yes, it is. Almost bedtime, mm-hmm. yes. For us old people. For us. Oh, God, don't remind me. Oh, my God. Uh, what? I was... It's like I was I visited a friend just now. I just came back and I said to her, I didn't bring a laptop with me just in case. I didn't bring this, I didn't bring that. I'm like, Am I getting old? And they looked at me and went, Yeah. I'm like, fuck <laughs> you. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We have this uh, ongoing thing where every time Cal comes, they leave something at my house and I'm like, Is this so you know you get invited back? And they were like, No. Are I'm you like, sure mm. are you sure Cal's not trying to move in without you knowing? I think maybe they're just doing it step by step, one toothbrush at a time, then a deodorant. <laughs> it's quite a long trip, so you know this is probably the most efficient way of doing it. I mean, yeah, but also, I mean, do you think it's their their slow way of being a squatter? Probably. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Hello everybody, this is the Ed Talks About Podcast, a weekly podcast, well, somewhat a weekly podcast, talking about cosplay, Comic Con, and anything else. I'm your host, Eddie, and this week we're going to be talking about those controversial cosplays. I uh, Yeah. Uh, on, on this episode, I've got uh, uh, Tessa Gara as guest, so welcome to you. Hi. I don't know why I sounded really, like, unsure. I knew you were okay. here. Uh, I think it's because I want to say, because um, I'm going to start saying... This is probably the U- This is UK's number one, um, U- uh, no, number one UK cosplay podcast. In brackets, unofficial, <laughs> <laughs> unofficially like censored or anything like that. But Not censored, there... censors. You know what I mean? Yeah, but are there any others that are only UK based? Really? Not really. Well, there are, I've squashed them, but I've got no real proof of it. So cease and desist has been sent. Exactly. So oh, that's what I'm saying. If I just say as a version of, I think I'm the best. I think I'm the number one. There you go. But yeah. I, 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 was, I should have said that bit where I said the the, the weekly podcast. You know, this is this is yeah. But I'm not good at promote self. So it, it's it's really shitty for me because you know, all right. You know when you're at work, those who are work. Fortunately, yes. And they always do the appraisal thing, and I, and yep. I, I hate it. Absolutely. Also, also goes with dating profiles, um, the uh, or maybe job interviews, things like that. They yeah. always say sell yourself, and like that is literally one of my weaknesses. Yeah, could we come back to that once I've told you all of my weaknesses? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. If I could sell myself, why would I be getting a job here? Yeah, I'd be an entrepreneur having like. A billion dollar yacht. <laughs> exactly. You know, I would, I would, you know, I wouldn't be here at McDonald's if I had a, a better chance of selling myself. Sorry for anyone who works at McDonald's and enjoys it. I do apologize. You are welcome to enjoy your job there. Um, yeah. I only pick on McDonald's because I, a couple of months ago, watched the film The Founder, mm. and that's really turned me off uh, McDonald's. Nothing to do with the food. It's their shady business practices that got to where they were or where they are now. And I feel yeah. sorry for the original McDonald brothers. If you haven't seen that film, I really strongly suggest to watch that film. I'm not suggesting that will te- that will also turn you away from McDonald's. I'm just saying it was a fascinating film. How well, we, we're not eating McDonald's, are we? Because we're boycotting McDonald's. Yes, that as well. Of of other things, yes. But you can watch the film. Yes, you can watch. Well, I don't know if it goes in their pockets or not, but uh, it better not. Yeah, it better not. But it's it got Michael... surprise me. Yeah, I mean, it's got Michael Keaton in brackets, Douglas. <laughs> No, that's his real name, Michael Douglas. Yeah. Which I find that fascinating. There's, yeah, but you can only have two, one person na- with the same name. That's why Michael J. Fox is Michael J. Fox. The J doesn't stand for anything. It's yes. just that there was already a Michael Fox, and he was like, yeah. oh, shit. Uh, uh, 
Joe, my middle name's totally J. It's not. It starts with a C. But hey, do you mind? Do you mind? Can you imagine if everyone uh, could pick their own middle letter for no reason? It's like, I mean, would J work for everything? Like, if, if mine was Eddie J Chang, it's not Chang. <laughs> I'm just. Doing it. I don't know why I'm trying to fake my name. I've said my full name in many times. Eddie J Chung. Well, that does sound good, it actually. Does sound good. It does sound good. Let's pick other. Okay, uh, let's pick. Oh, um, Alan J. Smith. That does sound. That sounds. I tell you one more person. It doesn't work for Michael J. Kane. Doesn't work. J. Kane. Why? Yeah. It just. It's too many A's. Like Michael J. Kane. It's just too uh, many. Okay. All right. Because Homer J. Simpson works. Yes, he's a cartoon character. Yeah, but J is spelt J A Y. Yeah, I know. That, that's what just... like, in the episode he finds out and he like pulls the cup, the plant out of the way and it says J. Just let me go. Henceforth, my name will be known as Michael. No, uh, Homer J. Since... <laughs> so good. I mean, could, could I mean, how about if your name was J J Johnson? You could just add another J. So J J J J J J Oh my god! If anyone's listening to this and they still haven't turned off, please, <laughs> if you are willing to put it down your full name, try put in the comments somewhere on my Facebook or on my Instagram or wherever you think is appropriate, or even just message me your full name with the J in the middle and see if it works. <laughs> uh, so my middle name actually is a J. <laughs> so are we going with Doc J J Tassagara Coffee? <laughs> No, no, like, like my in real life, my, no, my government I, signed. Yes, I know. I, 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 I'm respecting the name you've given me on screen. Okay. So I, I'm not that dumb. Oh, okay, well, that's all right. I, I, sure? didn't, I didn't think your your mum, when you popped out of her, went, I shall name her, or they, or him, Doc. No, they didn't. They, they didn't. They didn't. Although I was nearly Aaron Winter. Aaron Winter? No, Aaron Winter. <laughs> That I can't hear you properly. What? Araminta. A R M I Araminta. I'm dyslexic. What is Aram? What? What does Aramin come from? Um, I think it's so. It would have been Araminta and then Minty for short, which is what we named my first hamster. So I'm quite glad that my dad vetoed that. <laughs> but yeah, my mum was a flower child. She couldn't help it. I mean, yes. I, was, yeah. I could have been Elizabeth. Elizabeth J. Tassagara. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, we're, we're babbling. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah. Doc, how's the last seven days for you? It's been pretty good. It doesn't matter when it comes out. My life is pretty good. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's good. I'm, I feel like I haven't seen you, heard from you, or chatted to you since Comic Con. I think it'll probably be like that. Yeah. Thank I mean, because I've tried to get you on this podcast for about a decade now, it feels like. It. Yeah. Forever, forever. It's the heat. It just kills my migraines. Well, it kills oh, me. Oh yeah, no, seriously, the heat. Um, just over it. Uh, I don't want to like make people sick or drive off the road if they're listening to this or walk into things. Uh, I'm currently sitting half naked. I'll let you put your imagination which half. Um, it could be the top half, the bottom half, the left side, or the right side. Can you imagine? If I, was, I was like half naked on the left side. There is a drag race challenge where they have to do that. Oh, and, uh, well, no, one half is uh, a man and one half is a woman, so you just piss off the woman half. Yes. Well, how do you know? It is the weekend. No, indeed. It is still <laughs> Sunday. Oh, no, this is the Lord's Day. You're not allowed to do that. I think it's, I think it's specifically you need to do it on the Lord's Day. Yeah. Yes, yes, because, you know, that wouldn't be controversial in its, in its slightest. No, maybe that's what we should all start doing. Sunday at con. It's cross-dressing day. Cross-play day. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, some people do that anyway. I am some people. Yes, you. Yes, you are one of those some people. Yes. <laughs> oh dear lord. Um, uh, I'll just play a girl one day. Do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> Seriously, I could. I. I. I've always said do whatever you want. Like, it was quite interesting actually. Um, in May, the number of people who I'm trying to put this politically correct and and sensitive like who cosplayed the opposite gender to their i'm assuming their birth sign yeah and that was interesting for you know i'm not saying it was a huge number but it was a larger number than usual i'm like going oh interesting Mm. i think people are coming more around to it me 
Yeah. No, people. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I, I, I like to think that I'm quite, what's the word? Um, accepting? Yeah, accepting. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I couldn't care. Like I said, it's like, I'm sure there's things in my life that doesn't make sense to people or people who think, ugh. And I just go, I don't care. It's like my other photography brand. I, n- I try not to talk about it too often. I know it seems like I bring it up with literally once a podcast, a uh, podcast episode, but it's there, but I don't like mix the two together because I know there are some people who go, oh, that's, that's too much for me. Oh, no, no, too, too much shiny and slimy and, you know, and things like yeah. that. So, yeah, so, don't yuck other people's yum. Oh, you have to, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Anyway, <clears throat> um, let, let's get, get to the podcast because... I've had this thought in my head for a couple of weeks now and I want to talk about this. And so the title is of those controversial cosplays. And what I mean by those controversial cosplays, and, and I think this, I think this it came to a light quite recently after uh, the May MCM London Ooh. event. And I, I kind of just, <laughs> I, I think, I don't know if there's ever been a discussion about it and I kind of want to kick it off. So don't ever think, like like the disclaimer at the front that says, all of these opinions are our opinion. You can have your own opinion about it. Not to say that what we're saying, we're trying to project onto the community, whatever, and all that. I I just want people to start thinking about, start talking about it. You know, maybe not go rioting in the streets and telling people to, to leave, you know. Yeah, let's let's not do that. Let's not do that. I let's mean, who not do that. who would do that? You know, of, of all countries, yeah. who would do that as a multi multicultural country that we are? Yeah. To do but anyway, that's I I digress. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Can we just do controversial takes instead of cosplay? Because oh, no. oh, god. <laughs> oh god, oh man. No, if if this if this ever became a political podcast, I somewhat think this would be like the wish.com version or the timu version of the uh, the podcast that nish kumar does because yeah. i i see the clips for him going i love how passionate he is about these things and I was, that's what i want but then i think if i ever try to emulate it it just sounds really like bah, 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 that's bad don't do that you know that's how it feels like i will come yeah. across <laughs> so <laughs> anywho as i was saying so um Let's let's start easy. Let's let's go, let's. Uh, I was going to say going gently. Is that that's, that's a safe thing to say, isn't it? It's a safe thing to say. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, um, in, in your head, in your mind, how would you describe or define controversial cosplays? So I think for me, like, there's kind of two factions of cosplay. In that, there's cosplays that you'll do at home which might include things like um, Satsuki from Kill the Kill when she's got like pasties on and that's it. Mm. You'd probably do that at home. And then cosplays that you do to con, which might be her like full outfit, mm. for example. And I think we don't see as much controversial cosplay in person because I think people are scared. <laughs> so I think you see a lot more on on the internet than you would see at your average convention, if you like. But mm. I think I think on the internet you see a lot. I think because we're so interconnected with different countries. And for me, it's people who change their race or attempt to change their race. Mm. And people who cosplay characters that are inappropriate. And it's mm. not a case of, like, you can't cosplay bad guys because they're bad. No. People like bad guys because they're bad. That's the point. Mm. It's more people cosplaying things that are inappropriate for them at the time. Mm. Ch- children should not be cosplaying from has been hotel spoiler um, <laughs> oh we'll be we'll be touching that subject of, no hang on that sounded very wrong but let's, we'll, touch the poop. <laughs> yeah, let's not touch don't touch we will talk about that because that's kind of where this birthed from this this podcast this episode come from so yeah. so yeah carry on but there's also this like there's a line where people most people don't cross most people won't cosplay nazis most people well you say that yes yeah mm, my experience that doesn't hold true most people don't cosplay real historical figures and things like that so Mm. for me that's where the line is like i would never cosplay winston churchill for example because it it feels weird to me but if somebody else wants to and they do it in a respectful way 
Are you Maybe. saying you can't you can't pull off the cig- cigar look in your mouth? Is that why? No, no. I've got the belly, but I don't have a rest going. Oh, I definitely got the belly. I definitely got the belly for that. I oh, know. There's a there's a, totally off topic, but there's a guy who is making a fortune on TikTok growing his beer belly, and I'm like inspirational. How do I do? What? It? Yeah, I'll have to find the link. Hang on, <laughs> back up, back up. <laughs> Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. There's a guy who's developing. A beer belly. Yeah. On TikTok. Yeah. And people are watching this. Yeah, people send him money to buy food and beer and stuff just to make him really round. Can we not learn from the lesson from Morgan Spurlock, who has just recently passed away? Apparently not. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Like I said, do whatever you want. If it makes you happy, yeah. fine. I'm not I, I I'm not trying to be judgmental. <laughs> what was it? Be curious, not judgmental, said yeah. by Walt Whitman in the show Ted Lasso. Your favorite. <laughs> Honestly, that phrase sometimes does like sit in my head a lot. That if you, by the way, I've recently signed up to uh, Apple TV and I'm watching Ted Lasso officially. <laughs> Do not ask how I watched it beforehand, but <laughs> well, obviously you uh, you downloaded it legally. Oh yeah, yes, y- yes, yes, of course, yes. You did. of course, yes. Look, yeah. I'm I'm watching it legally now, so yeah. That's got to count. That's got to count. And also, the amount of publicity you've given that TV show, they can owe you it. <laughs> Have like, fun. Yeah. I made one TikTok video, which when I put it into a Ted Lasso group, I got sh- I got shat upon because they went, it's a bit out of date now. There's other places you could shoot. Like, oh, fuck off. I did that at the end of season two. I did all the places at the end of season two rather than... Anyway, anyway I, I, I'm digressing. I'm digressing. Anyway, um, it's a very good description about controversial cosplays uh, i think yeah it's not just about don't race you know cosplay a different race to your own yeah you know but um i'm not saying there's a but i, I just think is it simply as just don't cosplay outside your race or is can there be leeway but we'll, we'll cover that in later well i mean if you if you take it to its literal extreme everybody who cosplays in the uk and is not Japanese, should not be cosplaying anime characters. So that's yeah. your like extreme end of it. Um, but yeah, so if you're if you're only be told you can only so for yourself, um, forgive me for desc- uh, describing you as this, but you're of a white Caucasian um, yeah. birth assess uh, female, but I know yeah. you go by they. Um, so that means that's all you're going to be allowed to do. But you don't, yeah. do you? No, no, my trash man American. My my trash man Japanese boys. <laughs> my even worse fantasy boys. Yeah, no. Just no. just because you cosplay Nick from Gangster. Gangster. Yes. I got there. I got there. I got there. My boy. Um, your boy. Your boy. Oh. Um so yes, yeah, so that's what I mean by the strict rules of like of that. Because I it's like those I, I won't name the character or the cosplays and, and things like that, but there was an incident where I looked at, I was, I was booked for uh, a comic con mm. and the character was of a, of a dark complexion. Let's mm. say Hispanic. Okay. Yeah. The cosplayer that I, who booked me, I, I always check their profiles and I looked at their profile and I went, Oh, they are very white. Oh no. And it, I was half worried they would turn up fairly tanned yeah to the point of that's not a natural tan or you know as Mm. natural as you could make it and um oh dear uh luckily i didn't have to find out the answer because they actually cancelled on the day which uh gave me a huge relief but i did have this conjuring in my head of saying can i walk away should i walk away you know um but like I said, like if we all say the words "do what you want," but that that contradicts to like you can't. Do you get what? I'm anyway, yeah, I know, I know exactly what you mean because like it's like saying uh, "do what you want." Um, okay, I want a horse, so I'm gonna go make a horse. Yeah, and you know, all, yeah, in cosplay, where you know, um, cosplay's for all, but yeah. it's, it's also with an asterisk with these caveats. So. Yeah, but the thing is, it is for all. Like you can cosplay, I can cosplay Kaya, for example, from Genshin Impact, who canonically has a darker skin tone. Mm. I just don't darken my skin tone. Yeah, 
and, and, and just I've, turn and up I've, as the pasty guy. Exactly. And I've seen oh. many people who just stick to their stink skin color and cos like um there's a cosplayer who does bayonetta mm. um, and she's got oh she's uh, oh god i'm so so worried about me saying black now <laughs> cos uh, she's a black it is, it is correct terminology isn't it yeah, yeah she's I'm a, aware yes she's a black yeah. lady uh she cosplays bayonetta and bayonetta is a very white character but i don't give a shit if she's yeah. enjoying cosplaying her, and yeah, and she's not done anything to change her skin complexion, things like that. But like I said, it's it's such a weird because we all know not to do it. We all know not to go. Oh, hey, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't do this. I think it's a morality rule. It's kind of a, an accepted morality that we shouldn't do that yes. you shouldn't race face if you if absolutely 100 like. like i said I've, I've i've shot with many people there was one guy i shot with many years ago who did a character from an uh depending on how you terminology of oriental or asian uh of you know chinese background mm. and i found no offense to that of a white person doing that because yeah. it's cosplay is just dressing essentially dressing up and there's no ill malice to it. I find that says, "Oh, you're honouring so- uh, my culture." That is very nice. Yeah, things like that. Anyway, I think if it's yeah, done well, on. it's and it's done respectfully. I think it's a, a slightly different story than sort of people mm. dressing up like they're going to a menstrual show. Yes, like, there's a big difference. Yes. Um, let me ask this this next question. So you you gave a very nice definition of controversial cosplays, but do you think that has evolved? to the point that you're saying it now to what it was, shall we say, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, when cosplay was very, very in its infancy. I definitely think it has. If nothing else, because I think the, the move away from... I don't want to say accuracy, because you can still be accurate and not change your face, your skin colour, for example. Mm. But I think there's been a more of a move away into more creative. Mm sort of side of things with cosplay so you get people who do sort of very very heavy makeup even for characters that don't have sort of heavier features and things like that and i think that's really good um but i i yeah i think we're becoming less accepting but it seems to be more common so i think <laughs> the community we're all just like oh no don't do this you shouldn't cosplay this person or this or we shouldn't do this and then yeah. someone does it and someone goes yeah it's cool and slay and it's like no mm. uh, we talk about this every week um so yeah i think the the speed that cosplay grew during the pandemic has been a big factor in mm. it in yeah no. because when i started we, i started cosplaying for tumblr and like you, there was just no question you just did not do it mm. you would be shunned i'm an unbeliever um <laughs> and and but so, now there's there's even somebody who's around to pat them on the ass and go, yes, I love to see it when somebody does it so accurately. And it's like, no, it's not accurate, it's racist. Mm. For well, no, well, it's accurate, but racist at the same yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> which is, which is um, I was, I was going to say something so stupid like, that's unfortunate. No, yes, we we know what's why that's wrong. But yeah. like I said, but why do people do it? It's like, what's the benefit of it? And you know, there are, there's been so many reasons behind it and it's never been accepted, which is some of the, I'm honouring the, the, the character, or I'm I'm doing it as accurate as possible. And like, it's, you can tell there's no ill malice behind it, but it's just, it's the lack of maybe the understanding where if we're talking about, if we're clearly talking about um, race facing and all that yeah, in, in this context. And, you know, you know, it's, it's easy for one, set of people to do, to do it to a, to another set of people but let's talk about um maybe controversial cosplays that you know in other aspects like shall we say is it appropriate for little girls to cosplay as harley quinn um with uh, daddy's little girl on on their shirts no <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my soapbox up now oh, you go, you wear your soapbox wear your no. soapbox you stand on your soapbox sorry I could wear it, I can stand on it, it's fine. I'm still pretty tall anyway. Yes. No, it's it's horrendous. But if you had an eight-year-old girl 
calling a 25 year old man daddy in real life you would be horrified and call for safeguarding and rightly so it's gross it's weird so why is it okay for them to dress like that yeah it's not it's not okay and you, you i watch people and they there's a particularly with hell of a boss and has been because they look and their parents look and they like oh it's cartoons it's fine mm. and they don't engage with what their children are engaged with and so they just think oh okay it's dressed up as a funny colored stripey demon like yeah. no this this demon is a sex worker yes but i look, the only <laughs> thing i would like say that. to that the only thing i'll say to that and i'm basing this off in a sense off my sister's lifestyle because i don't have kids um and, and things like that my sister has a nine-to-five job comes home starts cooking do all the housework and all that when is she ever going to sit down and go oh I wonder what these things are. I'd better look it up. She's probably still doing work while she's at home. She, you know, she's got to contend with um, other family matters and things like, you know, the shopping and things like that. Yeah. Parents will not have the exact time to go, has been hotel, is that safe or not? They will see, oh, it's a cartoon. I remember when I was a kid, all cartoons were safe yeah. and things like that. But what I'm trying to say is that with my nephew who is going to grow up, He's going to know, in if he ever has kids, not all cartoons are safe, which is good. But I can understand with our generation and maybe the older, Ram at that age, it's not that easy to go, cartoon could be dangerous. It's going to be cartoons, it's safe. Anything on YouTube mostly is safe, should be type of thing. It, you, they won't have the time. I'm not saying this is an excuse. I'm just saying there's a reasoning why some parents have thought on that has been hotel isn't for kids. But yeah. children should not have unadulterated access to Prime, Netflix, or anything without a child lock on them. And Hasbin Hotel is an 18. Yeah. Oh, it no. shouldn't be available to them. They shouldn't be able to access it because you should be doing that before Absolutely. your child is old enough to hold a remote. 100%. And again, it is something somewhat for parents to add those locks in to make sure it's a child yeah. profile, not an all-access profile technology's moved so much again they're not going to be clued up enough i'm not i'm not trying again i'm not trying to make excuses i i have i can see a reasoning why mm. and it's you know like i said be curious not judgmental type yeah. of thing i mean i can i can see the reasoning i can, i totally see where you're coming from like my, mm. i think about my nieces but um harley quinn's a probably a better example maybe of that or i saw a, like he must have been primary school age like seven or eight and he was dressed as Ghost from Call of Duty. And I'm like, now, the missions are to go around shooting people in the head. How yeah. is this ever going to be suitable for a primary age child? The same with Suicide Squad. It's never going to be suitable for a primary age child to be watching. Oh, yeah, Ex exactly. And oh, it's, it's, but, you know, sometimes you don't want to. No, it, it is the parent to say, this isn't inappropriate for you, da 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 and all that. Anyway. Yeah, like when I was a kid, I used to go to, I used to watch Power Rangers and then I went to school and I beat the shit out of somebody and they were like, No more Power Rangers for you. <laughs> or like, Oh, I, I saw this move on uh, WWE, let's go powerbomb people, boom. Like, like, exactly. Exactly, yeah. Um <laughs> I, I, I wanna move the conversation along because we'll we'll pick up other examples along the way. But what I mean in your head again, with your point of view, what role does social media play in amplifying these cosplay controversial, you know, controversial cosplays? I should say, you know, by playing it up or playing it down, should be educating, you know, what? Um, I think there's been some really, really good ed educational posts go around about various things over the, particularly in the last couple of years. I seem to remember, but my memory is quite short. Um, apparently, apart from Power Rangers, and um, so I think. In that way, the, the community is very good in that people are quite quick to kind of jump on things. But there is an element of problematic things get shared. So the algorithm pushes them because they're being shared and talked about. And of course, if you see, oh, my God, if anybody follows at thiscosplayer.com, um, they just posted something super racist. Where are you going to go? You're going to go straight to their profile to see what they posted. And that's giving them engagement. So social media itself is feeding it because of the algorithms and the way that that technology works and is pushing it out to more people. It shows up. Um, I can't remember what it was. It was something on my For You page on my Explore page, sorry, on Instagram. 
and I was scrolling through and I was just like, doo, 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 what, excuse me. And I scroll back up and it was somebody, they had like a before and an after picture of them in cosplay and out of cosplay. And I, it could have been two different people just from the skin tone and the way that they'd done their makeup to like make themselves look um, African. And I was like, you're, you, you're from Italy. You're Italian. What are you doing? And so, but I would never go looking for that. It wasn't for a fandom I, I'm involved in. It's not something that I would look at. But obviously, other people have been looking. They'd gone to her profile. They'd seen these things. They talked about it. And then it gets pushed onto my Explore page. And I was like, oh, no. No, no, no. But mm. you can't escape it because that's how algorithm, algorithms work. Yeah. and uh, But but is, in a sense, pointing out like that stops others from making, in a sense, the same mistake or... Is 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 there a learning opportunity like going, well, hang on, why do they why did this happen? Let's not vilify them, but discuss it. Or there is no room for discussion. It's like point finger, vilify, but you know, cancel them. Well, it depends on what part of the internet you're involved in. And I think it also <laughs> depends on how old you are, to be honest, because a lot of people that get cancelled get cancelled over things that, okay, they're not great, they're harmful, they've upset people, they've made people feel shitty totally understand that but do people deserve to have their entire lives taken away from them because they behaved in a shitty way did they do something illegal so i don't know where the where the line is where that kind of thing comes along but um i think there's so much information out there there are posts there's stories there's those add yours things and everything that goes around particularly on instagram but tiktok's the same Mm. people talking about this like you can't say that you didn't know if you're in the community and you've got thousands of followers because it must have come across your feed at some point (laughs) some post about not race facing not pretending to have a disability you don't have that Mm. kind of thing it's got i'm sorry i refuse to believe that it doesn't no if you if it was your first cosplay and you didn't know okay yep Mm. this is a learning experience but i think if you've been around the community for a decade and you're still doing it mm, Mm. the community is not going to be that accepting of it no, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I, I do agree with you from where you're coming from. Again, this seems to be like, um, in a sense, that th- there's a need to be like, have some self censorship of sorts. Yeah, and that's in, again that that segues to my next question: of should that you know has it led to, you know, an increased self censorship from the communities? The way that we 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 need to do this. I think it has. I've had um, a few conversations. So for people who are normal about video games, I'm really into Call of Duty. And um, of course, a lot of the characters wear like black around their eyes and stuff because they wear a mask over the top. And there have been a number of Call of Duty cosplayers who were white who do that. And then they get called out for blackface. And I'm like, they've got grease paint around their eyes. It's, that's not what black facing is. Mm. And, <laughs> oh, that's oh. So you're giving us an example of something, in a sense, something going a bit yeah, too far, a bit too far. And and you know, and, and then people post like they're like, oh, you should all unfollow this person because they did blackface. And it's like, but there's a there's that line. It's it's so difficult. And I can understand why people shy away from doing things cosplays like that because the fear of cancellation in our community for some reason is so high at mm. the moment. And I don't quite get. I don't understand why. But I under, I don't understand why it is that way, but I understand why people feel that way. No, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the reason I'm asking this part of the question, I'm going to bring up this example. So as I alluded to, there was an incident. I don't know how true this is, so I will take it with a pinch of salt. But if Doc, if you tell me it is true, then I'll, I'll take your word for it. But apparently there was, and you've cosplayed this character from Has Been Hotel, um, Angel Dust. Ye- yes. And again, correct me when I go off piece if I'm getting the description wrong, but the character is a porn star. Yep. They're in hell. Yeah. And there is an an episode, a scene. I don't know if this is done to music or not, but um yeah. Angel Dust gets how, how do I put this? Sexually assaulted? That's the word, yes. SA. Uh I, I, I was going to say performing their duties, but I, I, I think that's even, that sounds even crass. So um, let's let's say yeah, uh, no, let's not say it is essay. Yeah. 
Now, there's two ways that could be seen, and one of them has occurred. Is it really right for s- s- people to cosplay a character that has been essayed because effectively you're, I won't say promoting it, but you're kind of like normalizing it? Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? I yeah, I do know what you mean. But I think over the years, particularly in cinema, there's been a lot of particularly female characters. Angel Dust is a bit of a standout in that he's a man. Oh, it's a man. Sorry, I missed it. Man. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a bit of a, a standout from that. But like Jessica Jones gets stalked and sexually harassed and things like that. So I think because it's become kind of something that just happens in cinema and is just part of a character's backstory for whatever reason, I think you would see, you wouldn't see people not cosplaying other characters that have experienced that because that almost says that there's fault on Mm -hmm. their side. But equally, I don't judge people that cosplay Valentino because he's a moth that's a pimp. Like, Mm. This isn't a real person. So, and like Grace from Call of Duty, who I cosplay, is a literal war criminal. <laughs> um, so I think applying real life, like laws and things like that, to fictional characters, and then saying right, nobody can like them because they've they've done this or they've experienced this or they've done that, I think would mean that we would have very few characters left. We'd all be cosplaying Bluey. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. But... Or, or Mario or yeah. Sonic and things like that. I get what you say. No, I, no, absolutely. So even if they have a very controversial attributes, yeah. it, it shouldn't stop them from with adults doing which is fine, that's great. That's my yeah, that's my that's no, my caveat. <laughs> no, absolutely. And now we're gonna go to the bit which I have uh, which I've heard and, and and I said this birth this at this episode, which is so from what I heard from a has been hotel me, a child cosplayed Angel Dust. And I don't know, again, this might just be hearsay, it might be someone just embellishing the story. They might have been performing a scene from it, or you know, that or there's someone stopping it, making sure that didn't happen. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I haven't got the full story, so apologies for not researching. I- but I really, in a sense, didn't want to research if I wanted to. I don't want that on my Google history. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it did happen. And I think that the song Poison, the, that scene happens within. It has quite a catchy dance and the, the lyrics and stuff are really, really catchy. And I think everybody at the meet was kind of singing along to it. And I think the minor child thingy um, got a little bit carried away, shall we say. Um, but I think it will stop relatively quickly. That which is good. That's good to see that the the community goes. Whoa, that's the line which has been crossed. Yeah, let's bring it back to somewhere somewhere safe, which is good. But again, I know I know we just said it back at a TV level, and we're probably going to be the exact same answers. But should someone have stepped in a lot sooner than that, like the parents type of thing? But again, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've just answered my own question by saying, if the parents don't have time to research and know all of this, and they're not, no one's informing them. Like, if schools are not informing, or other parents not telling them, or they're not up to social media type of thing, it's hard for them to know. Like again, like you said, they're just it's a zany character they see, and we're like, oh, okay, then it's a cartoon, all right. Yeah. Yes, there is. There is that. There is also. I mean. Um, like at the MC, not MCM, um, Megacon, Birmingham, has been meets in March. It was very, very specifically stated because there were some kids who came. They were dressed as Charlie and Baggy, um, and they were very specifically told you can stay for the group photo and then you have to leave because mm. this is an adult meet for adults from an adult sort of fandom, if you like. Um, and actually they and their parents were really good about it Um, and I think there's an onus on parents there's also an onus on us in the con community as adults I don't want minors around me when I'm cosplaying from an adult thing Mm. 
Like it, it makes me feel skeevy. It really does. Oh, and I'm yeah. not talking about seventeen year olds. Like I'm talking about primary school age children. So that's eleven and under for international friends. <laughs> Just makes me really uncomfortable. And so, like, if they want a photo, they can have a photo with me. And then I'm out because it makes me really skeevy. Like I'm old enough to be your mother. Like I'm not interested. Mm. And so I think that's a good thing. But it it shouldn't. You shouldn't be sending your children to cons expecting other adults to look after them. So the yeah. onus for me sits more on sort of parents and the adults or older older siblings that are around them mm. to be able to say, oh, that's not really great for mm. kids of that age sort of thing to mum and dad. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like I said, it's, it's e- we can all easily say, oh, the, it's up to the parent to, 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 to enforce this, to make sure that what they're do- wearing to a comic con is like, but like I said, not all parents have the time to do this. Yeah. Life nowadays has moved so fast. It's moving at a, such a such a rate that it's hard to keep up nowadays. Also, these Comic Con events now they say they're family friendly, and I'm sure there are some things I've seen. I've gone, ah, uh, do you know what? I don't even, I even I think, ooh, that's a bit OTT for a family event. But I mean, again, it's like I know it's, yeah. it's, it's I I mean, there's, let's put it this way: there's worse things on the internet. I know that's not a. Mm-hmm. It's not the it's not the best argument to have. Bad is bad, good is good, you know, type of thing. But yeah, there was a, a recent I can't remember. I think it was Anime Expo in the states, um, and they very clearly, although it is a family friendly event, their their costume rules are if it covers the same amount as you would cover at the beach, so a bikini, board shorts, um, a one piece swimsuit, whatever, then that's allowed. But there were a lot of particularly sort of what I call refer to as older children, so sort of 15 to 18, 19, mm. um, who were going around taking photos of mostly female cosplayers or female bodied cosplayers, if you will, um, mm. in like bikini armor and stuff like that and being like, oh, disgusting sluts. And it's like, mm. no, they're within the rules. Um, and a cosplayer called It's Hack did a really good video about that. And they spoke about the fact that it was in the rules, the rules that were agreed when you entered the contract of buying the ticket. Yeah. That people might be in swimsuits, essentially. Mm. And that's allowed. And if you don't agree with that, for whatever reason, because, you know, if you don't want to see that, that's fine. You don't have to. But that's, you can't stop other people from doing that. Mm. when it's within the rules of the convention yeah i mean you know, if, I, if i was at mcm and i pulled out a like a metal great sword they'd kick me out because it's against their rule it's and good. with good reason yeah but that's easy to see oh uh, you can always see weapon prop can check that yeah they can't google every character read the synopsis of the character and go mm, that's not allowed even if it's it's costume accurate type of thing well, yeah, but if it's if they've said if it covers the same amount as a swimsuit, yeah. and you turn up in something that covers the same amount as a swimsuit, like you're cosplaying from My Dress Up Darling in the mm. bikini, you followed the rules. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, I really mean, I know. I know, I, I know, and that's a very um, forgive me for saying that's a very cold answer because it, it essentially is saying as long as they follow the guidelines, that's it, and whatever comes from the public to go, oh, you, you, you know, you slut type of things. Like, come on. Uh, we we should have grown from that type of language and things. We should yeah. be more accepting. But it's like, what was it? Like um, the first or second Birmingham uh, Megacon live event where TikTokers and um, cosplayers were mixing in the same era. I think there was a bit of fraction between the two groups where, you know, the TikTokers were going, oh, well, are these freaks wearing costumes? Like It was the first one. Right. Oh, the... and allow me because I had a run-in with somebody from the TikTok con, mm. and it wasn't their child or their children that were being nasty. It was the mothers that oh. were being nasty. Oh, okay. Yeah, lots of judgmental women in their forties who are into TikTokers, and I'm like, how dare you stand there and judge me while you're wearing a I don't know random TikTok star T-shirt you bought from TikTok shop? Like, you are no better than I am. Mm. And um, I had a, a interesting conversation with one of them at, in the Starbucks queue because I was dressed as Hanma and I was in like a three piece suit and she was like, oh, it's so nice to see somebody looking normal. And I was like, what? 
What does that mean? I was like, what does normal mean? Yeah. And she was like, well, you know, not in one of those stupid, slutty costumes. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Your child is here to shake hands with people who make videos in their bedroom. Like, we're all on a level playing field here, okay? Yeah. We're all weirdos coming to do something we enjoy. Don't stop ruining things for other people. <laughs> but also, and I don't want to put the fear in God into any mothers with children with TikTok, no, no. but also, your your child who's got a TikTok ad could be talking to adults that probably shouldn't be doing that in the first place. Just saying. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, these are the things that pop into my head when I think about social media and all that. Yeah, it scares uh, me. It scares I know. Me. Uh, yeah, and like uh, to go back a few because there's some other controversial cosplays that I feel I should mention, which is part of it. I feel like I, I don't want to call it the Hall of Fame, but at least it's notable. You know, I, rem- I, I remember seeing a post that uh, saw two people dressed as the Twin Towers. And, oh, God. And, yes, d- oh, no, it was accurate. They had a plane going into one of them. <laughs> um, don't laugh. Don't oh, laugh. My God. Don't laugh. Obviously, we, we mentioned this earlier, but, you know, people dressed up as, as like, Nazis. And, like, I, I don't know how my brain processes that because I feel like, well, wait. It, let me let me try to quantify it so that I, so that you can tell me why I'm wrong or right. But it's like, why is it okay for war reenactments? In a, I know it's in a such you know a setting of telling a war, or you know, it's not like you know one of the royal family going to a party dressed as a Nazi. <laughs> that never happened. Oh, that n- never happened. Yeah. No, and be, and be photographed and put into the newspapers. God, no. newspapers. I hate them all. Anyway. Um, doesn't Eight justify, news. yeah, <laughs> doesn't justify what they uh, that person did. But I'm just saying. But well, you know, I don't know if they were doing it from a TV show that had Nazis in. It. I mean, what was it uh, the TV show Hello Hello had Nazis in them? So, yeah. But anyway, that's uh, you sound like you're better say something about that. Well, there is a few people who have been in the cosplay community for quite a long time and are quite well known who cosplayed the Columbine killers. Fuck no. Yep. So the Combine Killers were two uh, 17-year-old boys who went into a high school and killed 21 of their co- their fellow students with um, assault rifles. And there are people Jeez. that have cosplayed them who are still popular in the community. What? 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 Okay, now that's when I now be- leave the beakers and be less judgmental. That a lot. I mean, what what possessed them to think that was a safe cosplay to do? Or do they... Okay. I mean, I hate to say it in this way, they did it to get the notoriety, to get the in a sense people talking about them yeah i i i genuinely don't know um and one of the people in particular like will go out of their way to make sure that other people don't know Mm. but the internet never forgets so yeah yeah no absolutely Um, absolutely but you know and i i think i think there's an aspect for me columbine Mm. is one of the very 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 first big news stories i really really vividly remember even in the uk because this happened in colorado yeah um and I think, for me, it's living history. But for some people, that was before they were born. Mm. I work with somebody who was born post post nine eleven. Oh, oh no! Don't... I know it's it's horrifying. But that's not living history for him. That's just history. No, I, I, absolutely, I I get that. But <sighs> I don't think he would ever dress up as the Twin Towers. To be honest. No, but I mean, it, but... yeah. <laughs> I, I cannot understand why people make the mistake. I can understand yeah. why they do. I can understand why they think it's okay, or they maybe think it's funny. Mm. But it would be like, I, I, I can't even think of an example. Well, well, be... Yeah, I mean, let's give an example of how I feel about the, uh, of 9-11. Mm. Um, I, the last time I went to New York, I took a friend with me, mm. and we visited the site. Yeah. And that was the second time because uh, I've been before with different friends, and in, on both occasions I felt disgusted. And this is a very personal opinion. I was disgusted to see a lot of people there taking photos, like it's a it's a selfie opportunity type of situation. Yeah. And I and I stood there thinking, you do know the names that are on the on the plate that you you put your hand on, they died here where you're standing. Yeah. And you think this is an appropriate time to take a selfie i was sick to my stomach to see that and the second time i was there i cried my eyes out i don't even care to say that aloud yeah i cried my eyes because i think i think this is very insensitive the, the the people treat this 
as a tourist attraction, not a graveyard, because it's essentially is a yeah. graveyard to me. Yeah, uh, and I, I think um, with a lot of things like 9-11 and 7-7 in the UK, mm-hmm. Lockerbie, all of those, when, when true trauma happens, it affects the people who are there and mm. there then. So the people who are alive then, I mm. think it hits them in a different way to the people that come after. Yes. And, and, um, I, and I, in a way, I'm glad about that. I'm glad that people of our generation aren't traumatised by what happened in the Second World War mm. because that was horrendous. Yeah. But we, unfortunately, human, human nature is that we just continue re-traumatising each other. <laughs> We're just, we're just like, oh, we haven't had a war in a while. You know what we should do? And it's like, let's have another yeah, war. Yeah, let's have another war. And I think there's there's that distance for people mm. between those things. And like, you see pictures of people taking selfies at, in the gates of Auschwitz, and you're like, mm. what the fuck? Yeah, no, I think that's one reason why I would never go to Auschwitz because of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it it says to me that. So, okay, here's here's one question I want to uh, say is that. Can there and is there a place for controversial cosplays of any sort? Is it are we just taking it with a pinch of salt? Are we are we saying I'll just let them be type of thing? Hmm. I, for me personally, I think that there are levels of controversial cosplay. Um, I don't think you should cosplay school shooters, the Twin Towers, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yep. Um, I don't think Nazis are an appropriate cosplay, mm. even if they are based on fictional ones. So, like uh, Helsing Ultimate, for example, has Nazis. You can still cosplay Schrödinger, just don't put the swastika on his arm. Yeah, like, I was. It, was it the one character you um, wore, and you purposely took out a, even though it was an Asian character, uh, sorry, written yeah. Asian character. Um, you purposely took that out because there was controversy over that, wasn't there? Yeah, so in Tokyo Avengers, the main gang is called the Tokyo Manji Gang, and a manji is a, well, it's a swastika, but it's mm. it's level, it's flat, it's not twisted. Mm. Um, and it's it's for peace, it's a peace. Um, in Japan, it's, it's regarded as a peace emblem, but obviously it has very different connotations elsewhere in the world. Mm. And I, as soon as I received my cosplay, I wondered, I wasn't sure if it was going to, some cosplays with them, for their uniforms come with them as like a a square with a cross in it which is fine um some don't come with it at all this one did come with it so i just colored over it because i don't go to cosplay to cons to upset people mm. um and the number the number of people who were i had about three or four messages when i said i was cosplaying that character of people saying i hope you've covered up your swastika and i'm like it's not a swastika one but two, yes, I have covered it up. But, you, but because people can't tell the difference, that's why you should cover them up. Yeah, I, I mean, for, for me, of someone who constantly sees Chinese characters mm. throughout his life, I I could see that quite clearly it wasn't a swastika. And when you mentioned it to me, because I, I didn't pay much attention, but you can just about see that the, 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 you rubbed it out. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, I, I both looked at you, and I'm sure I gave you the look of, really? But at the same time, I went, okay, really? Yeah, I get you. Yeah. 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 You know, and uh, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, like I said, I understand, you know, you, you don't obviously want to show the, remind the world of, of these things and things like that. But here's the, th- here's the thing that I'm bringing up, okay? And, you can work out very clearly what I'm saying, but I will say this as broadly as possible. There is, for a number of years now, I've seen at Comic Con, a cosplayer who will, um, how do I put this politely without getting myself angry? And he will Cheeto himself, put a yellow wig on, wear a long red tie, blue suit, and go around thinking that's a really clever cosplay. For all three days. Yes. And, on a Sunday. and I have such issues with that political person. And I don't think they should be celebrated. I don't think they should be humanized. I don't think we should make a laughing point about it and go, oh, yeah, he's a funny dude. Oh, it's like, 
No. I I find that a controversial cosplay because it, it offends me. Mm. And I know a lot of people find it funny, which is absolutely fine. Like I said, you can have your view, I can have my view. But it offends me so much, that cosplay, that I, I generally have to like bury my violence in me. Because if I attack this person, I'm in trouble. Yeah. But no one will hear my side of the story say, that political person gave four years, made the world for four years the worst. And knowing, and for some reason, people can't see that and they celebrate it. And I just think, no, that shouldn't be the, like you, you were saying earlier, if you, you know, you shouldn't cosplay Nazis because of X, Y, and Z. All right, that political person has not done of equal measure, but still has said and done things like, like again, you talk about sexual assault, effectively omitting it on, you know, to the nation, and still people put that person into office. Yeah, and it really offends me that someone thinks this is a person I want to humanize. I'm going, no, absolutely not. And I, as I, said, I don't even dare talk to this person and just say, excuse me, it's the reason why you're cosplaying, cosplaying this person, because I, I am worried I will get so angry, I will deck this person. And I'll get into trouble. I'll be the one that get, gets thrown out. And I don't want that to happen to me. But like like the mantra I said at the beginning, cosplay for all. And it's because people will look, turn to me and go, oh, it's just a bit of funny bit. And like, to me, it's not. But, yeah. You know, anyway, sorry. Joke, jokes are only funny if everybody's laughing. And if but, something makes you uncomfortable, is it is it a joke? Yeah, exactly. I was going to say. And also, the bit was kind of funny like three years ago. <laughs> No, it's less funny now. Oh, I don't think it was funny three years then. I, no, that's fair enough. You know, and look, I go back to one of my favourite comedians, Jimmy Carr. Mm. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. I'm not forcing or replaying his jokes to people who are not prepared to hear it or like him. You know, I respect that. If you don't like him, I'll leave it out. You know, mm. but I'm forced to, well, not forced, but you know what I mean, but I'm forced to see him every so often. Yeah. And I've got to deal with it, apparently. Not, excuse me, you do know this offends me. Could you not wear this anymore? Or at least don't humanise him. Like, yeah, I, we, have to get, we have to get rid of the phrase, it was a joke, bro. Yeah, out of the absolutely. Like, when it comes to things like that. Because, it, it, uh, yeah, sure. I'm yeah. sure it was a joke. I'm sure you didn't intend it to yeah. distress people. But you did. <laughs> yeah. And if I swear, if I see this cosplayer again, and he puts a pillow bandage on his ear i might lose it i generally will have you seen all of the uh yes american yes. no yes yes um uh by the way if you have worked out who i'm talking about please don't put me in this person together in the same room do not even send my link to him and vice versa i will not speak to this person i don't need that in my life i generally mean that Please do I hope not. that he continues to be an anonymous tangerine. I don't want him anonymous. I just want this person to think of the action he's portraying. Because like mm. I was saying earlier, it's like, if you're saying the Nazis were a bad thing, why are we not doing the same thing about this political person? But anyway, mm. like I said, this is a very isolated view of mine. I know not a lot of people share this view, which is fine. Um, and things like that. Anyway, let's let's move on because I feel like I your soapbox without like I pushed you out of the way without telling you. And no, I, that's fine. You know, um, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, can controversial cosplay be a good thing? Can it? Can, like we said earlier, it could educate type of thing, but is it truly a good thing? Oh, ho, ho. yeah, that's a good question. Um. <laughs> Ah, see, I'm one of those people that I, I never want to say you cannot or you should not or you shouldn't like something or you shouldn't do something if you're not, you're not hurting other people. And I, I think that's where the line is. If people are uncomfortable about has-been hotel cosplayers, for example, that's, that's their right. They're allowed to be uncomfortable about that. Mm. But the has-been hotel characters haven't done anything wrong. They just don't like it, which is fair enough. There are things I don't like. 
and if I said them, I would be very unpopular. But but I think when you come to cosplays that are direct, that have hurt people, now the cosplayers haven't, mm. but the people they're cosplaying have, or the the things that they're cosplaying have, for mm. example, like Schrodinger or Rip Van Winkle from Helsing. Yeah, or something that triggers their personal lives. Yeah, um, I think that's that's the line. And I think if somebody says to you, whether it's somebody, you know, if somebody said to me, oh, I get really uncomfortable that you cosplayed Rip Van Winkle, who in Helsing does wear a swastika. She's a Nazi. In, but I didn't wear a swastika, just for a disclaimer. I wore a cross. <laughs> um, if somebody said that to me, it wouldn't matter what race, religion, creed, colour, anything that they were. I would take that and I would reflect on it and I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't cosplay her again. Mm. Um even in the more respectful way that I tried to do it. But I I think there's a very antagonistic side to this where people, instead of going to someone and saying, look, it makes me really uncomfortable that you darkened your skin for this cosplay or you wear an armband for your Attack on Titan cosplay or whatever it might be, there's not... People don't feel confident to do that. So I think in some ways controversial cosplay can be good because it can spark discussion and development of the community as a whole. But I also think... It can just lead to people feeling marginalised, especially if things get popular. Mm. If it suddenly became popular to wear a whole load of fake tan to cosplay a character, I think there are a lot of people with darker skin tones who would feel very marginalised by that and very left out of the community and like trivial- like um, other people trivial- trivialising their experiences. And I think that's, that's the line. When you're starting to affect real people, no, it's never a good thing. Mm. Okay. And that... not, not a case of pushing people, like if you're pushing somebody out of their comfort zone mm. and they are consenting to that, you know, oh, I don't like, I'm really scared of, of guns and the military, so I'd like to go to a Call of Duty meet, for example, just mm. pulling something out of my ass. <laughs> then, yeah, fine, because they have made that decision. But, yeah. like, you cannot predict that everybody at the convention hall and everybody on the tube on the way to MCM London, for example, is going to be happy seeing somebody wearing a Nazi uniform. Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah. And so that has to be the line if you're affecting real people. So, so essentially then, are we saying it's up to the cosplayer to make the right decision about the cosplay, you know, regardless how popular this, you know, the franchise or the character is? Yeah, and I think if it's popular, there will be more discussion about it. So mm. there has been dozens and dozens of posts about, like, the armbands for Attack on Titan. Mm. Um, for the Marley soldiers there's been dozens of posts about it and if you don't know if you type in Marley cosplay you'll see that most of them don't use them mm. so I would if I was a newbie cosplayer for example I would probably lean towards not doing it because why is nobody else doing it that must be a weird thing maybe you're not allowed them at con <laughs> but oh I don't know yeah, well, uh, well, it's just—it's such a messy like entanglement, isn't it? Well, yeah, and, and I was going to ask. I uh, uh, probably the, the, the I mean, we're hitting an hour now, so I probably we should start wrapping up. And I was going to ask the question of, I mean, is there any tips you would give? Well, not say tips, but any advice. But really, it's hard because it's because you want to, like you said, you want to honor the cosplay because you think, oh, either I relate to it, I like it, I like the design, da 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 da. You know, there are some people who may not understand, who just see the design and not understand what the character's background is and things like that. So they're walking to a mindful of not knowing why there is hate for this character, maybe, type of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, or some people might go, I don't give a shit. I like this character. I don't know why it should offend people. And I'm not saying they're right to have that opinion. But again, where I think there's it's a hard question because there's, until we, in a sense, find a way to find the ownership, what is and what isn't allowed. Because again, you know, you could ask the, the, the Comic Con to like do that. But again, they're not going to stop many people coming into their event if it, you know, puts money in their pockets type of thing. And of course, you you also in, deal with individual bias. Then imagine if you had a whole group of people dressed as I don't know football hooligans. You had thirteen, fourteen teenage men, young men dressed as football hooligans carrying pipes. Are you going to be the security guard that goes up to them and goes, "Excuse me, mate, you can't come in." <laughs> no, 
you know, there's there's the individual biases and individual concerns as mm. well for individual people yeah. at conventions working in security, which is understandable. I wouldn't want to do that either. Mm. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Fair enough. Ugh, I mean, I want to leave on a on a positive note. Um... On a positive note, most people are great and they really think about what they're cosplaying. Most people do. Yeah. Most people will cha- make changes to cosplays, either change their makeup or change the cosplay, the way it looks or the way it makes them feel, change the way the wig is. Like there's two characters in Tokyo Avengers who have afros um, or that tight curly hair. Um, and a lot of people, if they are white and they cosplay them, they just wear straight hair mm. or spikes or something. So there is a lot of like creativity and... I don't want to call it problem solving because people are being of different minorities and things like that isn't a problem, but it, it's nice to see that creative artistry and creative takes on different characters. And mm. it's great. Like all of the amazing um, young ladies who style their hijabs to look like hair. I mean, that stuff is insane. It's so cool. Mm. And so it, it, that's just one example of the way our community creatively overcomes differences and i think that is the positive thing to take away is that a lot of people are thinking about this already and they're already thinking well how can i do that Mm. without making anyone upset yeah and with and while maintaining my own you know personal uh feelings and morals yeah no i'll get back i'll get back off my soapbox now (laughs) (laughs) positive soapbox there no no it's a positive no absolutely and like i said it's like we're not saying you can't cosplay controversial characters such as like Angel Dust from Has Been Hotel. I'm trying to think of others now. Or the Joker. The Joker. Harley Quinn. Ghost from Call of Duty. Yeah. I'm sorry, he's not an uwu sweet boy. <laughs> I love him, but he's not people. Come on. No. Uh, Only with the characters from New Carnival. Yeah, you know. So I'm staring at my eater bags and just working out all no, the trash people. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to think of other like. Um, is it the, the word deplorable a correct word? Yeah. Deplorable. Well, Thanos. Thanos. Yeah. Deadpool. Oh my god, Deadpool is a terrible person. He's great, but he's a terrible person. Yeah, he really is. Like, I love him, but... Yeah. He's a bit very foul of mouth. He is the merc with the mouth, though. He he is. Yeah, he's yeah. great. <laughs> Gold star for Deadpool. I love you trying to trash it, they went, he's great. Yeah, see, but I have terrible taste in fictional characters. You only have to look at the ones I cosplay. I mean, just scroll through. People are like, oh, but Nick's your favourite. And I'm like, yeah, but he's still a trash man. <laughs> like, he kills people for money. Guys, he's not a good person. <laughs> <laughs> you you have problems, you need to seek help. No! No, he's mine! I want him! <laughs> yeah, this is my one. <laughs> I met somebody else who cosplays Nick and also sees him for what he is, which is a great character but a terrible person and I was like I'm so happy right now <laughs> I'm so happy <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad I think yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's at least two fans of Gangster who actually understand how Nick works yes I'm, 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 so I'm, I'm glad of it I'm glad I'm glad <laughs> uh, well I think we somewhat left on a on a happy note so we'll, we'll end the podcast thank you very much Doc of Tessagari Cosplay I can't remember if I said Doc of Tessagari Cosplay so I do I do apologise if I, I, I mispronounced your your. I was say signage. That's not it. Title. No, not doc. You're not no. an actual doctor. D O C doc. Your name yeah. is doc. But anyway, yeah. doc. I wish I was a doctor. Oh no, I don't. God, if I, I do. if I woke up in a hospital bed and I saw your face and went, "Hi, I'm your physician," I would immediately pull the plug on my. I'm mouth. great in a crisis, especially a medical crisis. So yes, but I but I I know you. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yes, there you go. Thank you very much. I'm not that reassuring to look at. <laughs> it's not about that. It's like, oh god, you're gonna. I'm gonna be here stuck with you, just ripping me to pieces, giving me out of season chocolate. But did you die? Yes, that's no. why I'm in hospital. <laughs> oh yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Salmonella from the out of season chocolate. Oh god. Um, what was I gonna say? Anyway, oh. Uh, if people need to find you on the on the social media and find your like uh, cosplays, your controversial cosplays, or, or just like want to see more of your work, where can they find you? Uh, I think I'm on pretty much all of the social medias, and it's always Tassagari Cos. It could have been Tassagari Cosplay, but Someone I'm lazy. Be. Yeah, you are lazy. And Tass- four letters is shorter. Yes, it's four less letters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you- That's half Eddie. That's half the amount of typing. But Tessa Gara is quite long. It's 
Yeah, I suppose it's eight letters, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. All right. That's why I had a short end of the name. Oh, God. Um, and it's like the, the non-binary urge to have three-letter names. Like, I don't know any non-binary people who don't have three-letter names. Yeah. Oh, that's not... Rise up if you do, though. <laughs> um, Jessica is spelled T-S-A-S-O-G-A-R-E-C-O-S. I'm yes. literally reading it. All I have to do is read it off the screen, and I still somehow fucked up. You never get my views over it. You really I? don't. I know. Tess so And I wrote it down for you. I know. But you assume I can read like that meme. <laughs> Shame on you. If only they could read or, you know, where the meme goes. Anyway, uh, if, if people need to find me on those social medias, if you go to foodandcosplay.org slash links, that's where you'll find my social media links, uh, such as Twitter, Instagram, threads, you, you name it, it's there. If you go to foodandcosplay.org generally, you'll find daily cosplay photos that I'm uploading. I'm trying to, I keep saying this, but I'm trying to do more articles when I, when I feel the need. Maybe I will do a, a follow up. No, I better not. <laughs> I was gonna, I'll, I'll let me do a follow up uh, article. To, no, God, no. Fuck no. Uh, I've said enough. <laughs> I've said enough, and I don't need to be cancelled. Um, if people need to, if people go to foodandcosplay.org slash podcasts, you'll find uh, previous cos- uh, podcasts that I recorded or episodes, I should say, uh, recorded with uh, Tessa Gara Doc. No, Doc off Tessa Gara. With different subjects, with different guests, yada yada yada. And if you go to patreon.com slash food and cosplay, you'll hear it. I think can we can we do a podcast extra? I've I've, I've asked you. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we uh shall we uh, what can we talk about? Shall we link it to this? Should we go through your back catalogue of controversial characters? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my Instagram up. We probably not gonna do a full bit on it, but we might just <laughs> do that and and other things um i might i'll tell you about october which i think i've already mentioned in another podcast but ep- another episode but I, I don't know if you know about it um we actually do you know what we could also talk about is why why you bring me out of date or out of season confectionery and <laughs> and how we can improve you in that sense you can't improve upon perfection yes we can oh god and on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. If you're not joining us on the podcast extra, we will say goodbye now. But if you are, we'll see you soon. But I'm going to say goodbye and they're going to say goodbye. So bye, guys. Bye. Fucking hell. <laughs>